Have you ever thought about what happened fractions of a second after the Big Bang, or how we can even probe that far back in time? When we look up at the night sky, we don't just see beautiful twinkly lights. Because light always travels at the same speed, the deeper we look into the night sky, the farther back we see in time. This is where the idea of light years comes from. To an astronomer, time is distance. There comes a point, however, where our ocular instruments fail us. We just can't see that far. This is due to the very fabric of the earliest universe, which is like a thick velvet curtain, not allowing light to filter through. Behind the curtain, our universe in its very infancy is a strange place, small and dense, growing quickly and launched from a violent singularity creatively named the Big Bang. The younger it is, the stranger it is, but it's all obscured by the velvet. Before I can tell you how I take a peek behind the velvet, I need to tell you about the signals that might exist there. Since 2015, we have detectors which can't see the first instance after the Big Bang, but they can feel them. They do this by looking for gravity waves. Gravity waves are produced when two massive things collide, as massive as black holes. From the signal of the wave, we can tell something about the environment in which those black holes came to be. Now, typically, black holes are formed from stars collapsing, but stars hadn't formed yet behind our velvet curtain. We need a different source of gravitational waves. Enter primordial black holes, First proposed by Stephen Hawking in the 1970s, these theoretical black holes aren't formed from stars collapsing, but from the collapse of overly dense regions of the universe. This means they could be significantly smaller than a star. The ones I study are smaller than a blue whale. This means they could form almost anywhere, even behind our velvet curtain. And if they could form, they could collide. And if they could collide, they could produce gravitational waves. If we know where to look for those waves, we might see the first direct glimpse into the very birth of the universe we all inhabit today. That's where I come in. I think about what the signal could look like, where we could look for it, and what it might tell us about the nascent universe, if we found it. I think about possible masses and numbers of these black holes, which could have existed, which would be consistent with what we see on our side of the velvet curtain. I read equations explaining how these masses change due to quantum processes in the early universe. I do this because understand, understanding the masses and when the holes merge is crucial to understanding the signals they produce. I model how two black holes start orbiting each other, account for different shapes of their orbits, and calculate how long it would take each pair to collide and begin producing signals. Finally, I synthesize all of this information in a code, which tells us what the signal might look like today, based on signals we've detected from garden variety black holes that we're more familiar with. Now, we know exactly what these signals would look like. They're faint and at high frequencies, which the detectors we have cannot feel, yet. But the age of gravitational astronomy has only just dawned, and the ways past your velvet curtain are many and developing every day. And for the first time, we know exactly what we are looking for.